Second. All in favor? Aye. Against, motion carries. Motion to approve the June 2017 minutes. Motion. All second. All in favor? Aye. Against, motion carries. For purposes of discussion, motion to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, we want to, uh, is he on this agenda? No, no he's fine. He's setting his stuff up. Yeah, no, he's out. I, I, he's on the number eight. Uh, let's, uh, I want to make a motion to uh, amend the, uh, today's agenda to take item eight and uh, move it up to right now. And that's we don't need a motion. Presentation by uh, Mr. Trenetra. Go. Go on, sir. Go on. Okay. Uh, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Tell us why you're here and what you're going to do. You have to speak loud for Okay. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me over here. My name is Ron Goako, and I am uh, representing the Environmental Defense Fund, and they have partnered with HUD so that this fellowship could happen, and this is a pilot thing for HUD and EDF together. So the reason why I'm here is uh, because the Climbing Core Fellowship has created a program where in 12 fellows, that means there are 11 cohorts of mine, and I'm one of them assigned here in Michigan, and the others are in the different states. And uh, we are here to help public housing agencies improve on their management procedures vis-a-vis -vis energy and water utility usages. We are here to conduct utility benchmarking and by putting it in the Energy Star portfolio, we would be able to come up with a score and then all the public housing authorities will be compared against each other across the USA. That's the whole intention of this. And we will also help in identifying opportunities in energy and water conservation measures. So the rationale of benchmarking here is we always realize that we cannot manage what we are not able to measure. That's why when we do benchmarking, there's always opportunity to manage utility costs because you will always have that reference. And uh, it also enhances the bottom line and sustainability once you have the energy management plan and it is being executed fairly well. This benchmarking is an effective platform for cost planning as well as for management. And uh, this is an example that is available at Energy Star website. Aspira Luxury Apartment located in Seattle has done benchmarking. In fact, they have been operating efficiently and they have a score of 77 out of 100. And they were able to get an Energy Star building certification. Now, as for Leo Palouche apartment, based on what we did or what I did on the benchmarking, the score of this building is pretty high. That's 85. That means this building is eligible to apply for Energy Star certification. And I'll give you more uh, information about the advantages of having the certification like that. The minimum required is 75, and you are way over that. And uh, further on the energy portfolio analysis that is coming from the Energy Star website, we can see that in 2011, that is the benchmark for this one because that's the available utility I have. The, nation, the red one, the red blocks, represent the nationwide medium score and or, or consumption. These are in terms of kilo BTU, that's the energy unit, per foot square of the building. And in 2011, the median performance of uh, national housing, multi-family multi housing is 137, and it went down, it improved in 2016 to 123.3. So you can see it from here. So there is a reduction in the energy consumption per unit area. However, you can see also the performance of this building that it also improved and it's a lot better because in 2011, the consumption of this building is 22% than the median in the nationwide scale. And in 2016, this is 27% less than the consumption of the median. So this building is performing well based on the results of the benchmarking that we did. And you can also see from this that in 2010, 
the score of this building is 76 and it improved to 85. The energy consumption has reduced by 10.7% in the source. And then this, the difference between source and site, the source includes all the transmission, the pumping. But the site itself is the building. And you have reduced your consumption in this particular building by 20%. The energy cost overall from 2010 dropped down by 13% from 48,000 for that year to 42,000. And your water use also was reduced by 14.0, So that's a good performance of this building if you have to compare the baseline and the current energy performance. So, the reason why we are looking at optimizing the performance of the building is you are able to get an Energy Star building certification. You have the opportunity to apply for Better Buildings Program recognition, which is administered by the U.S. Department of Energy. And once you get this certification, you are recognized by the world and you have brand recognition because Energy Star and DOE are involved in these programs uh, of certification and recognitions. You are able also to attract donors or sponsors because with this kind of certification, they would be able to see that you are serious in making this building very efficient. So that makes it easy for, for seeking possibly external funds from outside HUD. And you also are able to minimize your operational cost and that means minimum rental because the rental is accounted based on the operational cost and other costs. So with lower co operating costs, you could have potentially lower rental and that would attract a lot of possible applicants for this building. With more, with more possible potential applicants, you have a leeway and you have the leverage to select better quality tenants in the future. The bottom line is savings because savings is directly profit in that sense. Now, our proposed action plan is to prepare a utility management plan after this fellowship. And there are basically, the, these are the basically the priority that we thought this building could still do. There's still a lot of room for improvements. You can do recommissioning. LED lighting, these are the low-hanging fruit, it's so easy to do. Um, energy star appliances for the tenants so that they have uh, less consuming appliances. The heating and cooling systems can be looked into as well. And other renewables or technologies like the renewables in the future. So we can look at short-term and long-term energy management planning. And uh, we would suggest that you apply for certifications and recognitions and then also maintain the Energy Star Portfolio Manager, which we have created for you and then you, you can um, continue to do it so that you can completely manage the whole facilities and make it sustainable in terms of operations. That was very quick. <laughs> yeah. And then thank you for your time. I have a couple of questions, uh, sir. Yes. Uh, when was this building opened, Andy? 1970 was the first. Uh, okay, so I mean, it's a relatively old building, so I guess, um, I, I mean, a quarter is a significant amount if we're a quarter better than other buildings, it seems to me. Um, is it because a lot of the housing stock is old and we're being measured against a benchmark which is not that efficient, or is the building really that efficient? Over, the, over time, as I tried to ask more information about this building, it seems like you have already some upgrades in the equipment, like you have seven-year-old boiler system, for example, you have recently changed the perimeter lighting, and these have been done even before I came over and looked at it. So that means there's an initiative being done already. So that has made this building perform even better than the other multi-family housing across the USA. And not all buildings have that initiative. Since 2011 and 2016, a lot of the reduction we put in, the, we got a grant for the brand new boilers. And the new boilers were original, so they were really uh, not efficient whatsoever. Uh, we took some of the recommendations during that time to make some changes. 
we added new lighting in the hallways with the grant. So it cost us no money in expenditures. We also put diffusers on all the sinks in the uh, bathrooms and in the kitchen. And we also added low flow showers and we've been upgrading the toilets. And that would cause a major reduction in water use. So even though we're using water now to water our grass, which we never did before, we're still running 27% less than the, the, the nation average. But more importantly, just to judge us against ourselves, we're still down five additional percentage points in energy consumption, even though we've added a few things. So what Ron and I are talking about, Ron is a, a, a person who is focused on the environment, which sometimes contradicts those of us who have a more capitalistic approach to running things. But this business partnership that we're forming is showing me and showing Ron that we can cut down costs in areas that don't affect the tenants lives at all by just added, adding energy star equipment and in turn we can water the grass and make the building look nicer and still have some remarkable savings and be under the national average. Okay. Um, and this is uh, water, gas, electric combined, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I yes, have a question. Just before I came down here, I got an email from DTE, Detroit Edison, and they'd like to come out to my house and put in a thermostat. I have one. They want to come out and say, this is the latest and greatest, and they'll do it for free. Okay. Are you aware of that? I, I did get a chance to look into it. Yes, sir. It is true that DTE has multi-family program that gives them, uh, that allows rebates and incentives for residential customers. In fact, they even give away um, free LED bulbs uh, to some tenants. And uh, this program, you would have to apply for that. And in some cases, they would take the initiative to go to the residents like what happened to you. Here. It is true. Yeah, they have that kind of program. In fact, we have invited them over to come on August 16. We will hold a stakeholders collaborative initiative here and they would present a program to the public housing uh, agencies. Yeah, I don't know how the thermostats are going. If it, if all the thermostats well, the, we had a tenant meeting to share with the tenants a survey that we were conducting and the reasons for the survey. And during that meeting, Ron was soliciting from them issues that they had with the building. And one of the issues we've had for a long time is that this building is either hot or hot turf. There's two temperatures. And if you're living on the second floor, it's really hot. And so Ron's focus has been helping me talk about how can we better regulate that with the system we have. Well, we have a baseboard heating, so it's very hard to regulate that baseboard heating any cooler because it's always going to be warm it's just going to be warmer in some apartments but we had a meeting with uh, you're talking about the winter now right yes but it's, it's hot now upstairs no, too. That's, for a that's another problem yeah, that's a different issue. and uh, doug lafon's bringing over the image camera from the fire department for us to borrow tomorrow and uh but one of the things that came up in the meeting we held today was the the reasonable opportunity reasonable installation of geothermal which then would give us controllers in each individual apartment for heating and cooling and reduce both of those costs dramatically and so by by getting this energy star rating in if uh, once we get a stamp by an architect we'll be the first public housing in the state yes which will uh, get that certification and then that's going to give us the opportunity. So like no one has an Energy Star certification. No public housing. No public housing. There are three, but they're all privately owned multifamily housing. There's no public. Housing. So, yeah. so when you're finished with your work, uh, are you going to produce some sort of work product that indicates that we're eligible? For this? It's already yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we. W I will produce a document, a report that summarizes everything, and that includes the presentation and, and all have the findings. Like we're looking at right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And on top of that, um, it would be um, Andy's initiative to apply for the Energy Star certification. But right now, we tried to do that, but there needs to be a, a licensed professional who would validate this. And they and HUD, or sorry, um, Energy Star has a list of accredited um, licensed professionals. Are there any outside to apply for this? Um, there is a professional cost, but 
Energy Star or HUD has also referred a pro bono licensed professional. So All right. we'll so see how they're related to the cost of paying the certification for the other downside that you can see. No, I um the, it doesn't limit us or um, uh, limit our abilities to make changes in the future or anything of that nature. No, they would just have to validate that this is indeed the energy consumption per unit area. They would have just to validate the work I initiated here, and that's all. All right. Yeah, I should say Ron is here under a grant that Taylor, Melvinello, and Alan Park applied for together. So the three of us were awarded the, uh, they're, they're, the, the government is covering the costs for all this work. So we're not going to be cutting any checks or anything. And so Ron's been in Taylor, Melvindale, and then he's been coming back to Portdown Park because we're hosting the uh, stakeholders meeting here. And we'll send out an invitation to the board members who are just interested in what's happening. And here, there's going to be a lot of, the, the, the energy rating is going to give us the opportunity to then move forward with a number of other issues. All right. Okay, does anybody uh, have any questions before we let this gentleman get back to his work? Thank you. All right. Well, that's it then. Thank you, sir. Thank Ron's been, 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 been in our yard almost three weeks now. Yeah, I saw him last time I was here, so that's good. But, uh, we're going to put you to sleep if you hang around here. <laughs> You're more than welcome to join us, Ron, for the rest of the meeting if you'd like. Thank you. Andy, this might be uh, something that's really